Brad, you're on mute. Maybe he's on another call. He just wrote 30 seconds. Ah, thank you. It's nice to see everybody. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to see you too. <laughs> We're surviving week 487. Huh? Is that what it is? Yeah, it feels <laughs> like it. <laughs> you know what though? We're all in this kind of groove now. We have our habits, our new habits set in place. I mean, some of us might have set some really good habits and some of us might have set some really not so great habits. How many of you visit the refrigerator about nine or 10 times in an hour? Right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. See that? See? Prime example right there. Refrigerator stays open. All right, Mr. Boss Man, take it away. Ah, how we doing? Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for engaging in this. Uh, thanks for the extra 30 seconds. Just found out one of, uh, one of my coaching clients had uh, just lost his father yesterday to COVID. So. Oh, that's awful. Dang, this is real, right? It wow. sure is. So, you know, when we stress these come from contribution conversations, um, it's, it's, it's partly through a filter of we never know what's going on on the other side of that phone call, right? Um, and we've got to be sensitive to that. We've got to be, we've got to leave the door open to that possibility that somebody's really experiencing this in a very personal way. Um, and I think, I think this whole conversation over the next two weeks in terms of fierce conversations is, 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 giving us some of the tools to be able to have those conversations. So I'm excited we're doing that together. And here we go. So I, I want to start kind of the same way each time. And if, if this gets a little redundant, I, I trust some of the people on this call will tell me. Um, but I also think that because we're breaking us with this material and not doing it all in one sitting, I think it's important to remind ourselves each time as we step back into it. So while no single conversation is guaranteed to change the trajectory of a career, a company, a relationship, or a life, any single conversation can. That is the power that we have every time we engage with somebody. We have, there's the opportunity to change the trajectory. Um, and so I think I really want us to be sitting in that and kind of feeling that and experiencing that as we go through this material. And again, just to, just to educate on what does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the symptoms of a conversation that, that is a fierce conversation? We'll just walk through those again one more time. Speaking in your real voice. Speaking in your real voice. Speaking to the heart of the matter. Remember yesterday we talked about the, the fire instead of the smoke, right? So really speaking to the heart of the matter, asking and really listening, asking and really listening. Uh, a, a fierce conversation is going to generate heat and we have to be willing to experience that. We have to be willing to lean into that. You are enriching the relationship when you have a fierce conversation and when the conversation is, is over, you will be different. You, you will have grown. You will, you will be a slightly different person. So I, I'm gonna do a, a quick screen share here. Um, I'm gonna do the whiteboard. I am no master. You are getting fancy today. Oh yeah, huh? Ooh. I'm bringing it all, sister. <laughs> yeah, watch how fancy it is. Ready? This, this is it, here we go. All right, so text, here we go, boom. This is the most important math equation you will ever learn. And I can't even do it right. There it is. Get that tattooed on the insides of your eyelids, please. C equals R. The conversation is the relationship. The conversation is the relationship. Somebody give me an example of what could be missing in a relationship with a spouse. 
Keep it PG, if you would. Honesty. <laughs> Say it again. Honesty. Honesty, right? So let's, we're going back to uh, early algebra here, right? So if the relationship is lacking in honesty, that means the conversation is lacking in what? Trust. I'm going to make it even simpler. Honesty. Honesty. And yes, obviously, trust and honesty are, are deeply entwined, right? Anything that's missing in a relationship, we can effectively look at this very simple equation and go, oh, it's also missing in the conversation. If, if, my, if my relationship with my wife is lacking honesty, is lacking, let's go back to our equation, is lacking trust, that means there's trust missing in the conversation. So what's an example with a client? Same thing, trust, honesty, hey, your price too high. Right. Yeah, if I'm hiding, right, because I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to be honest, right? So I'm lacking honesty in the conversation, right? The relationship lacks honesty, the conversation then lacks honesty. Gee, man, I, I think we're doing everything we can, right? It's what it's going to sound like. I, I think we're doing everything we can. You know, we're going to do another open house, you know, when things open up in a month or two, we'll get right on it then. What? <laughs> right? We've got to add these things to it. So here's the good news. If I'm looking to add it, right? If I'm looking to add honesty to the relationship, I just add it to the conversation. Super simple. Just, it requires an awareness and then a fortitude to be willing to show up that way. To be willing to show up and say, hey, I'm gonna take, control. I'm gonna take ownership of this and we're going we're gonna to dive into having a more honest conversation. I think with a lot of agents, it's honesty might not be the word, but a level of directness, right? It's not that we're being dishonest because we're telling lies. We're failing to put the appropriate amount of weight on the conversation we're having. I had a conversation with a great, great client this morning um, you know, multiple properties in the pipeline, right? In the pipeline, getting ready to come on the market. Any market in New England right now, I would argue every day we delay getting a property listed on the market is a potential dollar amount lost. And maybe we won't feel that in the next 48 hours, but I can almost guarantee you're going to feel that in the next four weeks. And those are our typical kind of horizons that we look at with listings. All right, we've agreed, we're gonna list, we gotta, we gotta do this little bit of work, then we gotta get it staged, then we gotta get it photographed. That's eh, gonna take three to four weeks. Yeah, now make that three to four days. Find a way to make it the next three to four days. And if they can't, or if they choose not to, just make sure that we're really clear that that may mean we're actually having to reprice the home before it even comes on the market. That the price that I gave them three weeks ago is not necessarily a price I can honor today. And, and of course that's what's going on because how are, we, how are we dealing with our lenders right now, right? I'm having the conversation with the lender going, you know, not were they pre-qualified a month ago, are they pre-qualified today? Do they still qualify to get a house today, right now? Can you rate lock it today? Is that making sense? I'll take that as a resounding yes. Yes. Ah, there we go. All right, I'm done sharing. I'm done sharing. All right, here we go. So um, one of the ways to kind of look at that for yourself, I would argue is what calls are you currently ignoring? And for some of you, I just just do it. Pull out the cell phone, right? Do the little the little red right arrow that's like bing didn't go through, right? 
I'm pulling up mine right now just for a little integrity piece here. Yeah. Who was the person I blew off most recently? Kathy Manchester, the operating principal for our office. I did not answer her call. Now we talked six minutes later. Um, but I would go back. I would look at that. Who's, whose conversations are you actively avoiding right now? If you're avoiding a conversation, what does that mean about the quality of that relationship? It's maybe not what you hoped it would like to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hoping to be a little different, right? Mm -hmm. My experience, especially as a newer agent, was all of my relationships with clients started out great a hundred percent of them and some of them over time degraded and they degraded one conversation at a time remember yesterday was a whole conversation about gradually then what suddenly suddenly gradually then suddenly right so if i'm avoiding these conversations that's how it shows up at a relationship level right? I miss the call. I don't get back. They call. It's a heartfelt message. They really need to talk to me. I kind of blow them off with a text, you know, kind of pacify it in my own head. Fa fast forward that pattern over the next couple of months. If we do get to the closing table, do you think you're going to get a referral from them ever? No. Right? We're not building raving fans here, okay? So here's the thing I, I think it's really important for us to, to wrap our head around. In 2002, the Nobel Prize for Economics, Nobel Prize for Economics, was awarded to Daniel Kahneman, which you're in the last name, I'm sure, a Princeton psychologist, whose studies provided, uh, I'm sorry, proved that human beings make decisions first for emotional reasons, second for rational reasons. And I think this is really important underscore. This is not biased toward gender or ethnicity. It is a human condition, right? Guys don't suffer more or less from this. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. The human race makes decisions first and foremost emotionally. So how are we connecting with people emotionally? And some of you know, like, I don't love living there. Like, I love keeping stuff talking about business. And we cannot avoid the emotional conversation because that's where decisions are going to be made. They're going to be made from an emotional place first. What does that mean? What are you hearing? I'm hearing parents. is that you could ex you could almost substitute the word expectations for conversation. That um, the conversation sets your expectations or the client's expectations. If you if you don't call back, they're not expecting you to be you know uh, a good service partner. If you're not honest, then the expectate they're making their own expectations. So I, 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 almost everything you've said, I think I, in my mind, I, it sets off the word expectations instead of conversation, almost right. as though they were interchangeable. And, and I would agree. I mean, our, our setting of expectations early on, right, is so critical to the quality of the relationship. Uh, and then, of course, it's the living up to the expectations we set. doesn't do very good to tell everybody, oh, I'll call you back by noon each business day, and then you never freaking call them back by noon, right? We've got to live up to it, right? David, I just want to make sure. I thought it was a requirement that you wore your cowboy hat. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's downstairs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, next time, you know, let's make sure we All right. pull it we'll, together. We'll it's part of the brand. Yeah. I part can of the brand. Instead of my photo. That's right. <laughs> You know, Brad, in it. the comments, uh, you know, I think a lot of people could probably resonate with this. It says, I usually have a great relationship all the way to the end. It's after that I have a hard time to continue. How many of you guys could relate to that after the sale? Right. Well, I, I, I can give you the stat, right? 
eighty percent, roughly eighty percent, when walking out of a closing? You know, would you use your agent again? You know, absolutely, but only about twenty percent do. So sixty percent of us struggle with it. Sixty percent, right there, struggle with the follow up after the sale. I got my money next. Now, what I know is I don't know if I can name a real estate agent that actually has that in their heart or in their head, but it is how we show up. It is how we show up. So our actions are speaking louder than our words when it comes to that, right? So we wanna be, we wanna be really cognizant of the fact that as important as IQ is, our knowledge base in terms of market expertise, what we do as a profession, right? How we wear our real estate hat, right, David? EQ, EQ, emotional quotient is just as important, if not more so, right? And, and the thing I want you to keep in mind is it is a sustainable competitive edge to have a deeper level of connection. Some of you have been up against this before in a listing appointment. You go in, you do everything, you do it all right, right? You've done, you've done it all right, expectations, you know, trial closes, you name it, done everything right. And at the end, when you ask for the sale, they go, we just got to work with Sarah. You know, she sold us the house. She's, she's been a dear friend. Yes, Sarah heard her. <laughs> like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, you know, we got to work with her. It, facts had nothing to do with it, right? They were emotionally connected. They felt obligated there. And that's the direction that they're going in. I will also tell you that for everybody on this call, it is the number one thing that will insulate your business from being taken over by some sort of technology solution. Depth of relationship with the people in your database will trump an app if we actually have it. If we don't have it, then any app is better than a lack of relationship. I hope you guys wrote that one down. That was gold. Uh, so, you know, there's another question on here, Brad, if you don't mind me. Um, kinda, Do. Okay, great. So it says, what about if you're afraid of what they will ask and you don't know the answer to it regarding the future of the market, regarding the current market or other things? That is that, you know, again, a lot of us could relate to that because here's the thing. And Brad, you could touch on this. Do, do you have a crystal ball? I don't. I have a glass moxie bottle. Okay. Mine's right, so broken. I, I, I look into that, but it doesn't tell me much. Right, yeah. right. So can you, yeah, can you touch broken. on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, and I think what's great is actually using that as part of the dialogue. You know, here's, here's, here's my little filler line that, I'll, that I will say. Well, that sounds a lot like crystal ball stuff. That sounds a lot like crystal ball stuff. You know, I mean, we've been going through it as a market center. What are, what's our income going to look like in June, July? You know, how do we position ourselves? How do we help our agent? Like, that's more than 90 days from now. Like, we're guessing. We're guessing. If I have to, I'll guess conservative, right? As opposed to overly optimistic. But it's a guess. We don't know, you know. No one would have said, you know, two months ago that oil could go negative in value, right? How's, how's that even possible? Crazy. Yeah, just happened. Just happened. So, you know, it, it, to me, if you help the consumer understand that the questions they're asking aren't answerable, I think that can be very disarming for them, right? They're kind of putting it on you and it's a way to just put it right back on them. Like, you know what? That sounds like crystal ball stuff for me. And I, you know, I, I'd honestly, I'd just be guessing. Here's what I know about the market right now. And here's what that probably means for the next few weeks. And after that, we're back to that crystal ball. 
So if we're afraid to engage in those conversations, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out a couple of things. One, many of us get stuck in the, I want to look good and be right oh, mode. Did. Yes? Oh, I'm so glad you did. So it, it, just keep that piece in mind that if you're trying to I just got muted. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if you're trying to look good and be right, that's all about you. And that is not about serving your client. Does that make sense? Not if you, if that makes sense. So a lot of the fear stuff, think of it as, as the same as a hesitation to pick up the phone and call somebody in your database, right? It has nothing to do with that person. When we hesitate to pick up the phone, that's us worried about us. That's not us putting that other person first. So it's the same in this scenario. If, you know, man, I got to look good and be right. So I'd hate to get myself into a, into a position where I get asked a question where I don't know the answer. So, okay, let's fix that right now. Lean, lean in, everybody. Lean in, lean in. Whisper in this one. Yeah. You're not going to know it all. Ever. It's never going to happen. I'm 15, 16 years in this business and I'm just getting going. Some of you are 30 years in this business and you learn shit every day. You will never know it all. If you're waiting to know all the answers, get the frig out of the business right now. You will not survive. You have to be okay with not knowing. How'd we do? Okay. I'm going to share the screen again. Twice, Jen, twice in one call. Unheard of. Totally unheard of. All right. We're going a little off script, but I think it's important. Let's get rid of our uh, draw. Here we go. Actually, I think we can do this with, hang in there, hang in there. Hold on. I'm almost there, I promise. Wow, I'm not almost there, I promise. I will learn this in one second. Is this as much fun for you guys as it is for me? And yeah, we're getting there. All right, there we go. Okay. Center circle, center circle. That is your circle of competence. Center circle, your circle of competence, what you know that you know. David, do you know how to help people sell mom's house so they could get into assisted living? Somebody muted you. Yes, he does. Yes, he, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sell mom's house all day long. All day long. You know, Patrick, do you know how to sell a, a three unit in Lynn? Damn Skippy, I do. Damn Skippy. Yeah, all day long. Patrick, do you know how to sell a three unit in J Maine? Uh, uh, yeah. And then part of the plant blew up and it's the major employer in town. So might that have an impact on it? Uh, probably. Probably, yeah. Right? So Patrick has a circle of competence. David's got a circle of We all have a circle of competence, okay? That's not our issue. Here's what also is not our issue. The area in this outer ring which is the area where we know what we don't know. Our circle of incompetence. We know we don't freaking know. Patrick's like, I'm not even licensed in Maine. I'm not even allowed to sell there. Yeah, okay. So he knows he's not going up there to sell something. 
best case, I'll refer it to somebody, we're good to go, right? He knows he doesn't know. He knows he knows the danger point is this middle ring. That's where you think you freaking know. Our goal needs to be to have the line between our circle of competence and our circle of incompetence be the same line. That's when you show up as a professional. It doesn't matter how big your circle of competence is. There's plenty of business to be had in a small circle of competence. Listen to, listen to, um, some recordings of Warren Buffett on this. He does a great job talking about circle of competence. You know, he's one of the wealthiest people in the world and he self-described will tell you, it is a very small circle of competence, you know? I mean, he's best friends with Bill Gates and he has not invested in Microsoft. Think about the missed opportunity. He's been dear friends with Bill Gates for like 25 years. Imagine if he'd bought then. He knows his circle of competence, right? To know your circle of competence is to know where it ends. That's what you need to feel comfortable walking into a conversation where somebody might ask you a question you don't know the answer to. Because you can say, ah, you know what? That's a great question. Let me do a little homework on that and I'll get back to you. As opposed to trying to fake it. Is that making sense? It does. May I quote Mark Twain, Twain who Please. said, it's not what you don't know that gets in trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. One of my favorites, what you know for sure that just ain't so. Right? Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, we're going to see a lot of people that knew, that really knew a year ago, two years ago, get caught with their pants down in the next six to 12 months, right? They knew that being highly leveraged made sense until being highly leveraged drowns them, okay? I wanna hear a couple of ahas on this. Again, the big takeaway from this needs to be the conversation is the relationship. If I'm missing something in my relationship, I can look to the conversation and I can bring it to the conversation. I can own that and bring it to the conversa conversation, which ultimately will affect the relationship. I see a great question from Harry here. It says, so how do you give confidence to people who are counting on you for good advice when you don't know? Oh, that's great, Harry. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't know. I agree. It, People are gravitated to people who are authentic. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's, you know, I can't, I can't see Harry's face right now, but it's one of the things that helps me, gravitates me to Harry. Anybody who knows Harry is a great freaking guy. Wicked authentic. I mean, you know, you, you know where you stand. And I'm looking at David Dowd, and that's the same thing. Like, I know where I stand with David, you know? It doesn't mean he's got all the answers. I know he doesn't have all the answers. None of us do. So being authentic, right? Again, let's go back to, let's go back to just quick. Speaking in your real voice. Speaking in your real voice. People will be drawn to you when you do that. I just, I just got off a phone with my accountant because we got some of that, some of that funny PPP money. So I called up my accountant, I said, hey, I want to make sure I know what the hell I'm doing with this because the difference between that money being a grant and that money being a loan is a massive swing. So I want to make sure I'm right. Talk to me about this, that, and the other. And he said, you know what? I don't, I don't know all of it yet. There's some, there's some guidelines coming out, that, you know, probably in the next week or two that could have an impact on that based off of your situation. You know, we're going to have to watch that. Why don't we plan on talking in a week or two? That's the answer. The right answer is, I don't know. The right answer is we have to get more information. If we're honest and we, and we, and we share that with confidence with people, and, I, and I'm a big fan of the follow-up, which is, is that okay? 
right? That's it's a it's a little bit of a tie down, right? Right? Is is it already is is that going to work for you? Hey, if we don't know the answer for the next few days while we're doing some homework on it, is that going to be okay? I, I I can't think of five times in my life where somebody said no, that's not okay. It must be faster. If you're honest, if you come with from integrity, if you give them the real answer, right? People will give you time. We just look at how you interact with other professionals and how you give them time in their very own profession, in their very own expertise, right? So Brad, I'm gonna end on this because yes. I thought it was completely very powerful and I hope everybody wrote it down. The depth of the relationship in your database will trump any app. Yeah. Write that one down, guys. That one is gold. What does that mean to you? Write down what that means to you and write down what your action plan around around that would be. That's the point of these classes. So you guys could take away these nuggets and go implement them in your business. So go do that. Brad, what a great session again. Looking forward to tomorrow. You're great. Everybody here is wonderful. And uh, have a great rest of your day, guys. Thank you again for another great day. Thanks, See you. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Brad, thanks, everyone. Have a good day, Thank everyone. You. Thank Thanks, you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Brad. Have a good day, all. Thank you.